My fellow mountain bikers, this one's for you guys. This review, well, to be honest, I never thought I'd be doing this review. But as some of you guys know, I'm an avid mountain biker. We do lots of cross country. There's tons of places over here in the Pacific Northwest to ride, including right out my front garage, which you saw some of that footage already. And uh, I just sold my MDX, which has been my transportation as my wife and I are converting into an all electric family. My wife's Model Y is coming here any day now. And so I will be needing to use my Model 3 in order to transport my bike. So here's what we're installing and reviewing today. Yeah, this thing, this. can you see that? See, it says Tesla roof rack system model three. Now I know it's kind of weird me reviewing a product directly from Tesla. I actually paid for this one, probably the first one of a hundred I've paid for, but I really wanted to try these. So we're gonna get them on the car, load the bike on it, show you what kind of uh, rack I'm gonna put mounted to these ones, put the bike on it, go for a little drive, maybe go for a little ride again, and just kind of see how well I like this. And you guys are gonna go along for the journey. Okay, now real quick, here's what comes inside of the box. You've got your two roof racks, of course. You have an Allen wrench, tape measure, keys for the locks, which it's nice it comes with locks because many of these I have ordered in the past, you have to buy the locks separate. It comes with clips, you have four different aid pads, you have wing nuts, and you've got your covers, as well as some anti-abrasive tape. And then of course you need one of these. This is a Model 3. There is another set for the Model Y, but we are installing it on a Model 3 today. Maybe somebody will do it on a Model Y. Here's another observation that is super weird. They give you this manual that's got so much white on here. I mean, there's a ton of pages in there, but look at this. You have the tiniest font you could possibly print with pictures that you need glasses on to view. Why? Step one, thoroughly clean the areas of the glass this is gonna be going onto. And that's just the two seams here around this front part of the glass, the first section. All right, now the next step we're gonna be putting on this abrasive tape, but first before you do that, you gotta locate the little arrows down here um, on all around the car. So the first one is 18 millimeters, and if you, you, I'll never be able to show you this on camera, but it's actually already on the car. You don't draw this arrow, it's already there. You see a line here and a line here, and then there's a little arrow right there. Okay, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this tape here, you see the arrow right there, and you're gonna be matching that up on the car and sticking it just like that with this arrow and the one on the car lining up. The one on the back is just the same, just 42 millimeters. So it's really simple to find, just go find and line it up. All right, so the thin film is the top of it. You're pulling it off of it. So we're just gonna line this up here and I'm gonna wrap it down a little bit over the side, just like so the maximum protection when I put those clips on. I don't wanna stretch it, put it on like any other sticker, which means not entirely accurate or straight for me. Rub out any bubbles that are in there and then go do it on all the other ones. Next, we're gonna use this little rubber retract tool here to get underneath the rubber and uh, pull it back. So you can see now I got it in there, the rubber is back. You then are gonna take your clips, so you have four of these. You're gonna take one of your clips, you're gonna pull this back, insert this in there like this underneath the glass and then remove the clip tool. Then go around and do that in all the different locations. By the way, I wanted to show you this little trick I found too, because it's really hard to get it under this seal here in the middle. But if you actually start by going out here on the back and then come and force your way, push it this way, then you can get it under this one first. So start going the opposite direction of the seal you don't need to be under, and then push it back the other way, and you'll get under it. If you try to just go straight in like this, it's gonna be a total pain, but you go this way first, get under there, then slide back that way, and just like that, I'm under it. So much, much easier. So now that you have all your different clips on, what you're gonna do is we're gonna come back here and now put back on that little rubber piece. And this is as simple as it looks. Just make sure you got the right one. And again, I, I wanna keep reiterating this. If you ever get these confused, you can see on the picture here, the one that the tire looks different than the other three and the arrow pointing forward, that's how you know which spot this goes on. So just take it and slide it right over top. Pretty simple. And of course, do that on all four of them. Now this next step is to put on the actual crossbars. And you can see that there's arrows that show you which direction these go. And on the front side, you can see that these are, are bigger than others. So this is the much larger one, so that it goes on the larger pad. So it's pretty obvious which goes on which here. So you wanna lay them on first, just kind of align it, 
you kind of got a guess on the far one. Maybe you have a second person helping you. I don't. I'm just going to balance that there and then run over here and line this one up. And everything fits perfectly when you got it in place. There's two little parts down here that have to go in on the rubber pad and then the bolt, of course, goes in right here or the, the, the nut, or screw, whatever it is. Uh, right there. So that's perfectly firm in place. Next, we're going to do the same exact thing with the rear one. Next, we're going to take one of the four wing nuts and we're going to hand tighten it down here. You want to do it until your fingers feel like they're going to fall off. And then once you do all four of those like that, then we're going to come back through with this and we're going to get it nice and snug. Now, in terms of how tight to get this, they say you want to do it between 2.5 or 3.5 Newton meters. I'm not going to measure it. I don't have a torque wrench with me at the moment, but I'm going to do it until I have no play in here. That's another way they say to judge this. So I can see there's no movement there. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right there. I don't want to over tighten it. I'm going to do the same for the other four or three. Also, I point out that this line right here and the line on the nut here need to line up in order for this lock to work. So just be sure when you stop that it's heading straight out. Next, we're gonna go through with our key that they provide and we're gonna lock each tower to make sure no one can get in here and get it. You wanna do it in all four of them. They're certainly expensive, but you're starting to see really quick as you do this, why? They are uh, quite high quality, let me tell you that much. And I do love the fact that they're actually built for the car. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our covers and we're going to just pop them right on. And I believe they just kind of snap in here. So I'm gonna start from the bottom and push up and snap on. So bottom first, snap the top on. Right, now the bike rack I'm gonna actually install is this one by Yakima, got it on Amazon. Uh, I think it was like 300 bucks or something like that, maybe 200 bucks. But it basically clamps on the front. This is adjustable, can slide down to the back rail. Uh, should be pretty good. I'm gonna put it more on this side right here. This one's designed to fit 29 inch uh, rims, which is what my bike is. So I'm gonna have to do some adjusting because this is a big one. So I'll put the link to this one down below in the description as well if you guys are looking for a rack to go on top of your latest rack. All right, next I'm gonna get my bike on there and just really check to see to make sure I got everything nice and tight. And maybe take it out for a spin and come back and then check it again. So uh, I'm gonna first unstrap this. This part takes a while. So much turning, so much twisting. However, I'm not doing it on a super high SUV, so this is a lot easier. Also, one thing that's kind of nice about this specific Yamaha car mount is you have this lock built into it, so you can actually take it and lock your, uh, lock your bike right onto the mount, which is nice. So you can see that it is tilted a little bit, and that's gonna be the case because these things are arched. It's always gonna be tilted a little bit on there, but it's, I mean, it's very sturdy. I'm not seeing any movement on the rack here. It's holding as completely firm. All the movement is actually in this right here, which is fine. It's not going anywhere. I mean, that kind of movement. And as I do that, I can see that I can actually give it, get it a little tighter. Yeah, that looks absolutely awesome. So in case you're wondering, this is a, a pivot switchblade, a 2019 pivot switchblade and a 29er large, and uh, it fits on there. No problem. Extra large. You can move this back a little bit would still fit, so. So what's my thoughts on this? Well, easy to install. I love that it works right with Tesla. It's obviously made by Tesla. It installs exactly the way you would expect something from Tesla to install, nice, firm, perfectly in place. It works with universal mounts like this Yamaha. So would I recommend this? Well, there's probably a lot cheaper options out there. This is very expensive. I'll put that down below in the description. I think it was like 500 bucks I paid for this or 400 bucks, I'm not sure. Bought it directly from Tesla's website. But more or less, I guess this was a quick installation guide and uh, pretty excited to be able to get my bike out there and ride again. I'll see you guys on the next one.